decided to do a do-it-yourself video to show that it's really not a big deal to replace your rotor rings. Uh, this is a AP Racing CP5060 kit that on my E92 M3 that I do some track days with. This rotor's shot. It's my second set of rotors. You can see that there's some cracks leading to the edge there. It's like another one there. I think there's three on the front. Yeah, this is the front. This is the back of the rotor. Uh, usually the hotter side, and it shows it. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight, nine cracks on the inside. Uh, definitely feel it through the steering wheel. I can feel it through the pedal. Uh, I have all uh, solid lines on the car, solid brake lines, Castrol SRF brake fluid so it's very communicative uh, when you go for the brakes and they're cracked this is one I just took off um, to refamiliarize myself with it so I don't look like a complete idiot when I do this one to show you guys um, I get these brakes from Essex parts great company they always take care of me great brakes uh, they recommend to use a new hardware kit every time you service these brakes. I think the reason is these bolts are relatively small and they're in a very hot spot. A lot of brake dust, a lot of uh, just crap flying around. And I think it kind of gets stuck to the threads and it's just, it's supposed to be 120 inch pounds of torque to torque these down. But I think if you try to do it again using the same hardware, the brake dust might increase the resistance. Some of the hardware might be distorted or jacked up from the high heat. But uh, I probably wouldn't reuse these anyways. It's like 30 bucks for a kit. Just get a new kit. Okay. Uh, let's blast this out. a second ago. This is what I'm talking about. I look like an idiot. What the hell did I do earlier that just worked? I should have dumped out the hardware kit. See, this is what I'm talking about. Got an idiot. Every single one of these holes is going to have one of these bobbins. It allows the uh, rotor to expand and contract. Uh, on the half, you're going to reuse those to save them. These you can toss the bolts and the washers. So every other one of these bolts is going to have the anti knockback spring. You could reuse these. It's not distorted, it's not jacked up, it's not rusted. Um, so, when there's 12 bolts, you're gonna have six of them.
bunch of shit in there from the some rubber slag. It's jammed in there from the track. Pretty significant amount. Not a big deal, but we'll make uh, make a little smoke when it gets done. If you don't have one of those Milwaukee uh, power ratchets, get one. It will become your favorite tool. Save a lot of time. It's not super, super powerful, but... When you normally be turning ratchets, it's you're pressing a button. Slag bent around one of the nuts. Pretty easy. This was the passenger side. I'm sorry, driver side. And so this was the inside of the rudder. No cracks on the inside, driver side. There are two cracks on the outside driver side. Trying to get a little bit of the, if there's any rubber slag on there. You don't want it jacking up your torque values. These used to be black. They turn purple if you are driving right. There's no distortion anywhere. These are aluminum hats. They're going to be good to go for a lot longer. how these bad boys come straight out of the box. A little bit sticky if you put some oil on them so they look nice and fresh. They're not rusty. How's this going to go? So this yes, passenger side. These veins rotate this way to fling the air outward. Suck air in, goes out as it rotates. So this is going to go like this. Driver side, yep. So I'm going to sit this down just like I took it off. hardware make sure it didn't go anywhere. So I got six of these anti-knockback springs. 12 bobbins, obviously. And the hardware kit. I'm pretty sure they give you an extra washer in case one falls off and you don't find it. Okay, so... Um, 
bolt, washer, anti-knockback spring, bobbin, You get the idea. And a washer. Or not on the other side. And just finger tighten it. It's only like two two turns to get it finger tight. And I like to do the opposite side as well. To kind of center this thing. Then I guess just kind of start doing whatever. Once I get the two in, I just start kind of filling them in. First time I did this, I balanced it. I kind of pinched it between my legs. It's much easier to do it like this. On top of a, like a brake pad box.
I would normally be wearing gloves, but it's kind of hot today, so I didn't. It's okay to be a little bit dirty sometimes. You know, I've come home from work, she knows that. She sees you dirty from working on your race car. She knows she's married to a man. Nuts, bolts, washers, everything's on there. Every other one's got anti knockback spring. Visually looking to make sure I didn't forget any washers. On the front, on the back. That's actually the front, that's the back. And then, how I like to do this. I like to do this so I can see down because I'm watching these anti knockback springs. I want them to be aligned like that. I don't want them to get aligned jacked up or sideways. I don't want them going into the rotor vanes. I don't want them holding off the going off the edge of this thing. I don't know if they will or not, but it's not ideal. They need to be you want them kind of parallel with the rotor face. I'm doing is I'm kind of using these fingers to kind of hold the center with while using my index finger to hold the bolt down. The reason for that is I don't want to get these tight. Uh, like I don't want to get torque on them. I want them snug. That way when I go to that way when I go to torque them. That way when I go to torque them, it's just torque. It's not. I'm not wasting time turning these things when I get my torque painter on. I'm kind of watching the bottom because I know I'm holding the nut down. So when the nut and the washer are snug, that's all that's all I want. I just don't want too much play. Okay, so what I do to torque these things down is I switch uh, from this guy. What the hell am I doing? Okay, so. This guy acts as like a little torque meter. Don't know how accurate it is, never checked it or anything like that, but I have it set to inch pounds. 
These, uh, this hardware kit is specified to 120 inch pounds, which is like, it converts to like 9.99 foot pounds. So if you don't have anything that goes that low, you have to have like a really expensive digital torque wrench to get that. But this thing seems to do the job fine. This is the second time I've done this with this. And uh, it works. It's right-handed so I'm going to use this bad boy on top eight millimeter down below and this thing starts to beep when it gets to the torque value you specify I specified 120 inch pounds Helps if it's on. So that was that was 115. So it's right there. I don't. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being a tiny bit under because I don't know how accurate this thing is. Not one of these bolts was loose by any stretch. So I'm okay with it. Another reason why I like to go look down into this is I like to make sure that those anti-knockback springs are straight. You kind of manipulate them a little bit. Probably doesn't matter. This whole thing is designed to, this whole rotor is designed to slide in and out on those bobbins on the rotor hat, so it kind of centers itself. But I don't know, it's kind of, uh, it feels good to cross torque it correctly. a lot of time like that, kind of sloppy in that way, like triple checking on accident. Once I do like more than two and they're already snug, I'm like, okay, that's all of them. It's kind of sloppy where I don't like to keep count or something. So that's it. So they're all snugged up. All my bobbins are parallel. but it's not it's fine it's really that simple